So I'm really pleased to be having a chat today with the brilliant designer and presenter Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen uh, in his wonderful new shop in Sarancester. Uh, Lawrence, thank you for having a chat today. Absolute pleasure, complete pleasure. Thank you very much for coming. No, well, it's fantastic. We're looking forward to having a little look round yes. um, after I've done a few Treat yourself questions. to a little bit of retail therapy Absolutely. for having been such a good, a good interviewer. Um, <laughs> well, I think that remains to be seen. I think you'll find I'm not. But Marks anyway, out of ten. Yes, know. yes. Um, so, was interior design always on your career path? No, the beginning? no, not really at all. I mean, I, I studied fine art, and um, and it was quite a, a complicated. It was a very classical training, you know, it was uh, uh, a lot of life drawing, it was a lot of cast drawing, um, a lot of analysis, a lot of the science behind fine art. Yeah. Um, and I then went into to, to business effectively after, after art school, you know, I was uh, uh, running marketing departments and it was, it was only after about five or six years I felt I wanted to go back to doing something slightly creative. And I was just asked a lot of the time to, to, to you know, troubleshoot interiors or to get involved in interiors. Jackie at that time was working, um, she had, uh, by that stage she had her own business, but she'd worked for the Amberville Crichton, she was doing a lot of party design. She had an incredible black book for yeah. London in the late 1980s. So, you know, there were a lot of people who were very interested in, in, in me coming and, you know, playing around with their dining room or doing this or doing that. But actually, yes. it took off very quickly into a more, uh, a much more kind of professional uh, much more commercial context. I was then asked to do uh, help out with things like the Richmond Theatre, which then led to the Criterion Theatre. A lot of very big public spaces, a lot of work yeah. in Thailand, uh, a lot of hotels. So I, I, I had a very diverse portfolio very early on, which yeah. is unusual. Yeah. You know, normally you're just sort of looking at a couple of curtains here and a you know a little bit of uh, uh, redecorating there. But actually. Um, I certainly, by the 90s, I was doing some very, very big stuff, mm. um, which was quite chunky, chewy interior design. I kind of slightly regretted at that stage not having uh, learned interior design, you know, not having learned the, yeah. The, yeah. the kind of the, the, the architecture of how to put together uh, um, things like, you know, sort of air conditioning runs and, you know, yes. uh, electrical layouts. All of that I had to teach myself. Um, but funnily enough, the fine art thing is still a very important part of what I do. It's, it's, oh, it's sure. still... All of these patterns, all of these products are all stuff that I've drawn. All my art is a very important part of how I decorate, always yes. has been. Yeah. But actually, just on a practical level, I love the ability to be able to draw a product that uh, we will be manufacturing um, in China or in Europe or even, you know, the other end of Siren yes. Um and be able to, to uh, you know, email a very specific idea of, how I want how to put together to. rather than, you know, having to describe it. Mm, fantastic. And um, would you say your artistic streak, does that run in your family? I, it doesn't run. It certainly doesn't seem to run to me in my family. Okay. It very much runs from me um, uh, in my family. Uh, and, you know, both girls uh, uh, have got a very keen eye. Hermione is obviously... You know, she's now running the, 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 the retail side of the business. She's doing a lot of the commercial work, a lot of the marketing work, and she runs the de home decorating service. Um, and Cecile um, has always had a very, you know, very literary creative mm. eye. And actually, certainly, grandson Albion is, is, is brilliant at drawing Avengers. You know, Fantastic. should we ever need to... to How old to, is your grandson? <laughs> he's five. Five. So should okay. we ever need a kind of a repeating pattern of, of Iron Man and Black Panther? Then he's uh, the one for me. <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, it was, it was funny. I mean, my, actually, having said that, my father, my father was very interested in, in creativity. But he, uh, as a surgeon, he, he kind of... I think he, he, he was felt that he had to focus on that. Yeah. Um, but my mother, I mean, the star of the family, actually, was... My mother had an aunt, so my great aunt, Frida, um, was an embroidery designer um, oh, wow. for Norman Hartnell. Okay. Um, and I've got her portfolio, and I, um, which is something I'm very proud of. Yeah. And she, um, she did some work on the Queen's wedding dress. She did oh, wow. a lot of very intricate, mm. kind of quite William Morris-inspired uh, uh, embroidery designs in the kind of 20s and 30s, which have always been very inspirational to me. I've got a lot yes. of her designs framed at home. Um, so I think there's, there are kind little of little friends. glimmers, yeah. there are little, you know, sort of sparkling little treasures yes. in, the, um, uh, in the family jewel box, yeah. but by and large it's all quite kind of 
straightforward and yeah. slightly dull and yeah. uh, um, you know doesn't involve a lot of colouring in. No. Okay, brilliant. Well, it, all your stuff is just so vibrant and that, well, I mean, I you know, I think full of life and you know, design has great. to be something that that really reflects your personality, reflects yes. your character. That's not just as a creator, but I think as someone, you know, as a user, as an end mm. user, when you get at home, your home has to be someone that, that that's about you. And I yes. think we've come out of a, a a good couple of decades where being unusual, being colourful, being uh, enjoying things like pattern was rather looked down upon. You know, yeah. it's about understatement and. You know, very dull colorations mm. and it's you know, around now, though, it really it? is. And yeah. I think lockdowns had a lot to do with that. I think people have been stuck in these very grey spaces, yes. um, looking at the same grey walls, oh, feeling yeah. you know, oh fed my up. god, <laughs> fed up with this. Yeah. You know, and I think also people have got a lot more confident. There's a, there's a still a lot of snobbery about mm. interiors mm. Um, in 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 Britain, and and people for a long time. Um, felt that things that were colourful or patterned were a bit naff, you know. But actually, I think people, w with the big resurgence of things like maximalism, mm. people are suddenly going, no, but that's fun, you know. Yeah. And of course, these things often start with fashion. Yes. So people have started wearing a lot more pattern. Yeah. Colour has become much more important as part of uh, uh, the armoury that they select to present themselves. Mm. So inevitably, I think it's, it's something that starts happening at home as well. Yeah, no, definitely. Definitely, and I'm sure lockdown has I think helped it made a, big difference. a lot. Yeah, as, make know, a big difference. I think also so much time to think about their. Homes you know, when for, for for my generation particularly, um, I think we grew up in houses that were a lot more patterned. Mm, um, yeah. You know, in the sort of the 60s and 70s, it was all about Laura Ashley and mm. William Morris and, yeah. and or Bieber if you know your yes. your parents were exotic. Mm. Um, and actually, I think we look back on those days quite fondly, quite nostalgically. Yes. You know. No, so I think, I think so. there's a lot of nostalgia in patterns. And, and so, you know, we sell a lot of this at the moment, uh, Suburban Jungle, which is a so very lovely. William Morris inspired pattern. Yes. But um, I've given it a very exotic spin. You know, I've got panthers and ginger plants rather than robins stealing yes. strawberries. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. It's so lovely. Um, so, Lawrence, you've featured in numerous uh, TV yes. series over the years. Which, which, is there one that you enjoyed um, doing the most? I'm quite lucky because I tend to be able to enjoy the one that I'm doing at the moment, which is quite handy because some of them can be, you know, a yeah. lot, a lot, either a little bit on the dull side or a little bit on the overexciting side. Yes. But I, I mean, I think the big thing is, you know, everyone keeps returning to changing rooms because it's where the whole thing started. And of course, you know, it was revived last year and we're going to be doing more this year. Um, and so... 25 years later to be doing that show, yeah. which was so incredibly awesome. iconic. Um, the interesting thing, though, has been in, in the, the, the intervening period, in the 25 years, I've been involved in so many spin-offs of that show mm. all over the world. Mm. Um, you know, Australia with House Rules, uh, the apartment in, across Asia, um, uh, all the stuff that I've done in America, things like Trading Spaces. Yes. You know, so there was that one very British program that started it all off yeah. um, and has had such huge influence. Um, but it was, a, it, it, it was a great way of showing people that actually you can have fun with what you do in, yes. in, in, in your decorating. Yeah. It doesn't have to be too grown up. And I don't think it should be too grown no, up. No, you no. Know? And I think that's why everyone loves it so yeah. much. Yeah, it's a bit more enjoys, rock and roll. Enjoys watching it. Um, and so changing rooms must have brought a lot of different uh, challenges. Mm. Um, are there any sort of particular times or in instances? Yes, well, as we know, <laughs> Panda, there, there, there were several, there were several moments all over the tabloids where they didn't like it, big time um, oh, gosh, in the early yes. days. And uh, but I, I, you know, I mean, I can remember because I was very, you know, changing rooms was something that that literally landed in my lap. I had no. Uh, I had no sort of kind of predilection to want to go on television at all. It just sort of happened quite organically. Mm -hmm. I was very surprised by its success. I was very surprised by the fact that I was on television. And I, and in the early days, I was also quite kind of you know destabilised by mm -hmm. these incredibly big reactions from people who didn't like the work that I'd done. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm but sure then, it must be difficult. What, but to the start funny thing was that very quickly. When the programmes actually then came out, that you then had this enormous and very supportive backlash the other way around, saying, well, actually, I really liked it. And yeah. so I think one of the big things that I understood very early on was that actually interiors, your interior, is going to be something that's about you. It's going to be a very personal experience. Yes. 
So actually, this show, which was quite confrontational in its own way, you know, which was about you know um, making interiors, uh, um, you know, quite kind of MTV, quite kind of uh, uh, energetic, yeah. certainly very very game show, was actually a very good device for a lot of people to 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 get them to work out what they like and what they didn't yes. like. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I might have been doing something and everyone was going, oh my God, that's such a Tarte's boudoir. But then you get a load of people saying, it's exactly what I want. Yeah. You know, well, I, I want that different. Tarte's boudoir. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, and uh, any any major cock-up that you that sticks in your mind? Well, I don't, you know, <laughs> I mean, the thing... would like to share with The us. thing, I, again, this is the first time there was a show where... The cock-ups were the star of the show. Yes. Um, you know there was there, there there were never any outtakes from changing rooms. You know because mm -hmm. the outtake would be the bit where you do it and it works. You know always it's when the curtains fall off the wall or when the paint doesn't dry or when yeah, the neighbour yeah. doesn't like it. Um, and so in many ways it was the first kind of reality TV show. You know yeah, the, yes, there was no amazing. there was no kind of you know manicuring it. Um, and I can remember very quickly, because again, as I say, you know, I was very inexperienced with television. I didn't, you know, I had no exposure to being on television. When I then started doing these other shows, which were much more grown up, and yeah. I had this whole team of people that would do things for me, and, yeah, yeah. you know, and we'd do a take, and you know, I'd say, well, I'm not really happy with the way that that's gone, really um, you know, and they'd go, well, we'll do it again. I'd say, really? <laughs> we're allowed. <laughs> Sadly, we can't. Do we're allowed to do that. <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm sure, I'm sure you never cock up. Oh no, never. <laughs> Um, and uh, so, how, it must have it must have been difficult to start with. I know you touched on it um, mm. a minute ago. When uh, a home owner you, that you'd mm. you know, done their room absolutely clearly did not like what you. But had the really done. funny thing is, and this how is, did it make you feel? Well, what, what, what's always amused me is that um, I and I'm I'm really so happy with this. But literally, this is absolutely the second sentence that people always have in their mind after Lawrence Lloyd and Blown, which is the guy that made people cry when he did their rooms. Because actually, that only happened three times. So thing, 25 so. years of all of these shows, um, you know, all of these programmes. But actually, there were only three people that actually really physically didn't like it. And and I, I love it being that way around. You know, I love yeah. having that kind of Captain Hook branding. But actually, the reality is that there have been, you know, tens of thousands of people that really liked yeah. it. And I think a lot of it was down to the fact that um, by, you know, and this has happened with the revival of Changing Rooms as well, is that people know I'm about to do their rooms, so they're anticipating something, like, really scary and schlocky. And then when they open their eyes, they go, oh, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's very colourful and there's a lot going yeah, on. Yeah. But actually... It's exciting, and I think this has been the big reaction since we opened the showroom here, is that mm. people have come in and they've gone, oh, my goodness me, well, look, you know, you've got parrots and bums, and you've got this, and yeah. you've got, you know, huge murals, and you've got kind of William Morris, and you've got patent carpets, and then you go, well, I quite like it, yeah. you know. And I love the idea of being able to nudge people's comfort zone with something like taste. And also, I'm very proud to be doing it in science system. I mean, this is something, this, this showroom concept, we looked at doing it in London, we looked at actually doing it in Sydney, mm. we looked at doing it in a, a variety of other places, and we may well one day do them in a variety of places. Yeah. But actually to be doing it here, where I live, yeah, this is the absolutely. community I'm in, yeah. you know, so it means that any kind of press that we get mm. about this mm. is, is, is press that's shared with the entire town. And I'm very proud of the way that yeah. Sir Ancestor is now a very elegant, design orientated yes. space. The, the you know the culinary offer is exquisite. You know you've got a lot of very very disparate, very different, very diverse decorating shops. Mm. Um, you know it's become very buzzy. It's become yeah. very cool, Sirencester, no, and that's absolutely. great. I think it's great. It's in Sirencester. So mm. Good for Sirencester. Yeah, well, and Sirencester. also I mean we were delighted to get the building. I mean this is the the, the old police station, um, and as you can see, it was done by the architect that actually did Hogwarts. Um, so you know, it's a uh, it's a lovely way of uh, uh, you oh, know brilliant. cementing our house style. Yes, definitely. So, um, who would would you say you've enjoyed working with the most over the years? Is there? It's I mean, you know, for goodness' sake, I, 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 I quite um, I'm quite relaxed, so I, I find I get on with most people. Um, and actually, it's been you know I've I've, I've I've worked with so many people. Um, 
I've just uh, I did a big program before Christmas uh, doing snow sculpture in in um, uh, oh, wow. uh, in Austria, and that was with Johnny Vegas and Danny Dyer and and um, uh, you know Liam Charles from Baker. And you know, and these these are people that 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 you, you know I probably wouldn't wouldn't necessarily bump into at a cocktail party, no. you know. But actually, we, we had an absolute poot. We had I a great bet. time, you know. And and I like. Um, I mean, it, it, again, there's quite a sort of a close coterie of of media types around here that that you know it's nice to always bump into, and that you know everyone's got a kind of a parallel existence. You know, you see someone like Julian Fellows um, here. And he's, you know, quite relaxed and quite posh and quite Lord Fellows. But you know, in 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 London at the Groucho Club, you know, he's he's you know he's a screenwriter. It's it's, yes, it's yes. nice when you've got that kind of sense of, of of everyone having a slightly different life. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. So maybe we could talk about this lovely mm. new showroom. How long have you actually been here now? Well, we opened in August, very in a very soft way. Uh, I mean, we've still not done a massive, massive, big. Well, you know, we are here. COVID, well, probably. you know, you get things set up, and mm. then you know, you worry about it, and yeah. and yeah. and actually, the I like the fact that we're doing so well, just really quite quietly, that people have found us under their own yes. terms, and yeah. they've come in, and and we've got some very, very, very. Uh, dedicated uh, uh, clients who love the newness of it. I mean, the, the big thing here is 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 the, the way it functions as a showroom. So this is where you come to buy um, uh, the bespoke fabrics or the bespoke wall coverings, and these aren't available anywhere else. No, so you know, no. I have a very successful retail brand that is is in you know Next, is in Wayfair, uh, all over the world, is in um, uh, 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 you know places like uh, Hasbro's in China. Um, uh, and in Robinson's in, in Singapore, in Asia, all the way, everywhere you go, more or less. But um, that is always product that is created for a market. This is the other way around. This is me just designing patterns, just painting, just creating uh, uh, home furnishings or um, uh, decorative items. And, you know, it's sort of like, well, buy it if you like it. You know, yeah. it's a much more emphatic, much more kind of um, almost couture yes. way of retailing. Yeah. Um, and it seems to fit Cyrus Sister very well. So Cyrus Sister is a very design literate space. Mm. Um, and I think people like the theatre of it. They like coming in here. They like the fact that it always smells good. They like yes. the fact that we have the music. They like the fact that it it, it, it feels quite international. It doesn't necessarily feel mm. like a, a market town. needed that. Well, I, you know, I mean, it's, it, it, you know, why not? That. Why not? Yeah. Um, and now we, so we do a, a home decorating service from here, which, which is very popular and, and was with something that Laura Ashley did so well, but um, obviously they've gone now, mm. um, which is where people, you know, we, we, we do the curtains, we do the, the upholstery, yeah. it's something that Hermione runs, as well as we, we run that in, in, in parallel to the, the bespoke design service. So that's the mm. side that I do, which are the yes. big spend, yeah. um, you know, real, everything is, is, is designed from scratch. Because yeah. we have the whole building, so we have the, uh, the, all the design team um, there and upstairs. Fantastic. And we're now running everything from here. So it's, it's, it's very much a flagship. And you here a lot of the time. I'm here now. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've seen, again, with, with uh, uh, lockdown, you know, up until lockdown, I, w I was only in Siren Sister for probably, I mean, it was, it was as little as sort of four or five months a year mm -hmm. because of particularly the big Australian series, yes, Massive, yeah. um, and then straight on to Asia. Um, but I was very lucky. The minute lockdown hit, Actually, all the, the, the UK shows suddenly started happening again. Mm. It was like a, a real weird moment of timing. Um, yes. So I'm, I'm, I'm still filming away a lot. But these days, um, you know, it's, it's, it's nearly always in the UK, yeah. um, which, uh, which I really enjoy. It means I can spend a lot of time. I've got, you know, a very, uh, uh, you know, very, very boisterous um, uh, family life. I've yeah. got grandchildren. I've got, you know... Uh, yes, everything going on. I don't want to miss out on that. No, yeah. absolutely. And was this um, this showroom shop? Was, was this always in the plan? Or it's kind of. It's a very interesting point, approach? actually. Kind of, but not. Right. You know, I mean, for for, for a long time, we were doing very well um, in a in a quite kind of um, under the radar way, and it was about the big clients. And it was about the big contracts. Um, and I, I remember having an idea several years ago about, well, you know, it'd be brilliant to have a really strong 
design presence mm. yes. uh, in, in, in a high street. And I think in many ways, it was inspired by the fact that there was so, so much doom and gloom about the high street. I felt, well, that, that's exactly the time that you then start yes, thinking start about getting on the high passing, street. You yeah. know, if everybody's on the high street, then you know, it's, 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 you've got saturation. But actually, mm -hmm. why not try and bring something back to it, bring yeah. it back a bit of sparkle? And we've always done incredibly well as an internet brand. Um, but actually, you want to come and shop. Yeah, actually, you know, you want to exactly sort of touch the you know exactly stroke. And, yeah. yeah, and in fact, this was a real. Um, so this project, this whole showroom project, was a was a, uh, a, a a real result of the first lockdown. I mean, you know, it, it meant that the whole business retracted a lot. Um, we were very lucky; we had a lot of clients. I was still filming actually through most of the yes. lockdown. Um, we were still going, but actually, it gave a lot of everybody else time to think, think about things, it, yeah. you know. And so we thought now would be a good time. And then also, mm. um, as we came out of the first lockdown, a lot of the landlords were getting very concerned about you sure. know uh, filling spaces. So mm. you know, we 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 were very lucky that the Bathurst Estate have been unbelievably supportive of what we've done. Mm. Here. Um, this is also great to listed. This is quite yeah. a big deal. Yeah. So we needed a lot of support from mm. uh, the, the 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 planners and heritage and stuff like. That. And they were great. They you know they were they were more than happy with what we've done. So timing really was it was it was all good timing. It was, Every cloud, I suppose. Has that's exactly lining. it. That's exactly it. And I think that Pages sometimes, <laughs> you know, you you look at the way that your life is and the look at the way that your job is, your career is, and because it's not going the way that you want it no. to go, you think it's wrong. But actually, um, it's so much more creative to just see, well, okay, the energy is taking me in a different direction. Mm. You know, I could very easily have, have you know, we, certainly with the first lockdown, I just about managed to get back from Australia. It's what, you know, I was on, on the verge of having to have one of these relief oh, flights God. out of Australia. You know? um, and, you know, I could have just sort of sat in the middle of the living room and, and kind of burst into this, yeah. well, right, never going to work again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But actually, um, you know, it can it's, give you a nudge. It can. It's in inspired. A different and inspiring yeah, direction. Yeah, perhaps. exactly. Inspiring creativity. I think. Is yeah, a good thing. yeah. Um, and I know you're involved in the money.co.uk yeah, um, yeah. offices here in Sarn, which are fantastic. Do you do a lot of work for businesses? Yes. Um, Would you say that's your sort of? I mean, I like working core. for businesses a yeah. lot. Um, I've got a lot of. Uh, uh, you know, wonderful uh, domestic clients that, that you know, we, we've done some incredible stuff. We're just finishing off a huge, huge project in South Sony, um, a new built uh, project in South Sony. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, but actually it's still, I mean, I think, you know, I, I, a lot of the work that I did at the very beginning was things like hit theatres, restaurants, hotels. I do love doing those because mm -hmm. I think I love adding that layer of experience um, uh, to, to, to what's going on. And in fact, if I have one gripe um, about the loveliness that is the Cotswolds and, and mm -hmm. Sarancester in particular mm -hmm. is that, you know, the, 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 um, the culinary uh, uh, tradition around here is incredible. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, absolutely brilliant. We've got the most brilliant chefs. We've got the most brilliant um, uh, uh, raw ingredients. You know, there's yeah. a real sense of innovation and quality. But often, um, the interiors are really very uncomfortable. And I'm very bored of the uh, the current Cotswold cliche mm -hmm. of you know mouse back panelling and exposed light bulbs and a bit of brickwork and some mm. very uncomfortable kitchen chairs. Yes. Yeah, I you know that you know what happened to that night out where it was a sort of wonderful plush red yeah. bistro and a guy had a big kind of you know yes. pepper grinder and yeah. you know you had sort of a candle on the table you know and it was yeah. romantic and because it, it, more than anything it's the acoustics. You know, oh, when when you go out, awful, oh, it's just terrible. Yeah. And it, you know, I love this whole gastro idea, Rose but evening. It, I mean, you know, I think again because we were all denied that for such a long time. Now, I want to go to a good old-fashioned restaurant mm. um, that's a bit like this. That's yes. maybe got a couple of potted palms or whatever. Yeah, you know? yeah. So I can be there with my wife. I can be there mm. with my family. We can hear what each other is saying, saying rather yeah. than having all the chairs being scraped over so bare bad. floorboard. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Or, you know, this sort of you know, great big echoing coming off all the mm. exposed brickwork. And I think that that's something that does need to be rethought. So, yes. I mean, I love everything that 
um, you know, Mike at Cotswold Life used to do about the, uh, uh, you know, about how improbable it was to serve things in a pair of Wellington boots. Mm. And yes. You go to the pub and you, your chips arrive in a flat cap. Yeah. I, I completely get all of that. Yeah. But I think also the other thing is that, you know, let's start making dining a bit more experiential, as yeah, the Americans absolutely. say. You know, let's make it a little bit more seductive. Yeah. I mean, I, I grew up in this tradition where you were taught... You know, I did so many restaurants in places like Knightsbridge and Mayfair where, mm -hmm. you know, you always used pink, you always used um, uh, raspberry because it was very flattering on people's complexions. Mm -hmm. You know, you had light bouncing off a white tablecloth or you had lighting in the middle of it. Yes. You know, you had a lot of very soft furnishing, you had deep yeah. carpet. So it made the whole experience incredibly luxy. Mm -hmm. And eating out is expensive, yeah, you know. But let's, okay, the food's marvellous and it's great. And I love it when the chef comes out and we all have a chat about it. But also, mm. I want the conversation to be lovely as well. Mm. I want the, the, the whole to evening to be something that's, yeah. that's uh, uh, seductive and memorable. Well, you need to, you need to get into all these... I know exactly. For goodness sake, yeah. you lot! Really? Pull, your, yeah. pull your socks up, yeah, you know, exactly. crikey! Need to be I, mean, I don't. I, exactly. I don't want a restaurant to feel like Clarkson's Farm Shop. For goodness sake, <laughs> it should feel like Lawrence Llewellyn Bones Boudoir. Yes, exactly. Um, so, Lawrence, where would you say you? Where do you draw your inspiration from mainly? His travel had a big hand in this. Travel, gin. Uh, gin, more gin, gin. gin. yeah, yep, more gin. Real, yep. I, th I think one of the big things is history. I mean, I, I you know, I've, I, I love um, using historical style as a springboard to create something quite dynamic, something yeah. quite new. And I've got a load of real design here. It's like William Morris, who's got Cotswold boy as well, uh, Kelmsker, and also people yeah. like David Hicks. He did a lot of work in a Cotswold. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, and actually take take a lot of inspiration from the age of the building. You know, mm -hmm. this is. This is a wonderful, it's from the 1850s, it's crazy, it was, you know, put together to, to uh, you know, it is the police station, it's the old, yeah. uh, we've got the old cell block around the back. Oh, wow. um, so you, you've got a lot of kind of, you know, Victorian, rather pompous, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's like Jack the Ripper architecture, yeah. uh, which we painted pink. Yeah, yeah why would you not? Brilliant. Yeah, why not? <laughs> why not? <laughs> um, and your uh, wallpapers and, yes. and fabrics, where are they actually made? Well, all, yeah, no, they are. I mean, the stuff country? here um, is all made uh, uh, in the UK. And in fact, actually, now the wallpaper is all printed in the UK. Um, so um, um, one of the interesting things, that, in fact, for with the entire business, so the big business, um, the retail business, is that um, uh, a lot of what we do has suddenly become uh, UK-based because, obviously, you know, Covid is a big mm, part of that. Yeah. Um, uh, just supply chain has been an absolute yes. nightmare, and that's not just Brexit. That's things like um, you know when, when there was a problem with the Suez Canal. Yes. Um, you know, up until that point, there was a real knee jerk of getting everything made in China. A lot of our upholstery came from Thailand, actually. Yeah. Um, so a lot of the big relationships are looking at supply. I mean, our SCS office, which is huge, has an enormous mm. uh, um, uh, business, that they are all made in the UK. So there's definitely a real um, there's much more interest in that and and I'm very keen on artisan stuff so a, a lot of things like the lamp bases they're all um, uh, blown specially for me um, uh, by a guy in Blackpool I, I'm very interested in, in, in presenting more and more and more local stuff and I keep trying to encourage people you know if you've, if you've got something interesting if you've got something different you've got something pop in yes you know show me show me how, how am I let's see whether it's something that we can um, you know whether we can sell it or whether we we might tweak it we yeah. might you know uh, do it in a slightly different way but I mean one of the joys now of uh, digital printing um, which the UK really leads the world in is the fact that it, it, it you know it can be turned around very quickly um, but also it can be turned very very locally yes. and this is what we've really pioneered though is, is this idea of the luxury of digital printing um, it used to be something that was very kind of, uh, you know, felt very temporary. But mm. I mean, with things like the linens, you know, I mean, that's that's a uh, that's yeah, a very that really traditional is, feeling, um, uh, you know, toile de joy. Um, but actually, that that's digitally printed, so we can do that on a variety of different surfaces uh, to a variety of different things, scales. So and then these are all my drawings. This, the, I did a series of these drawings whilst I was doing a, a, an American show. Um, all your drawings. Yeah, so yeah. It's so just, just sort of fantastic. It really, really is. Sort of idealised scenes. 
Um, Beautiful. But uh, yeah, no. So I mean, this is this has been one of the, the the great things of here is that I can get it on and do stuff. I mean, that like the Tropicoco War Mural over there um, with the you know this, this very tropical oh, Indian wonderful. scene with the fountain and the elephant and stuff. Like that. Mm. You, you know, there's a lot of longing in that. You know, yeah. there's a lot of me wanting to be there in that. Yes. So you know. Uh, well, there's a lot of drawing in that. Locked up, locked exactly. down, just look at that. <laughs> you know, I could draw. I was, what's been lovely, I mean, we had, um, so that, that set up with the wall mural and the curtains, and in fact there was a sofa. Um, we've had several clients come in and just buy the whole lot. Mm -hmm. You know, they want the whole look. Um, and I love the way that they're so appreciative and so emphatic about something yes. like that. Yes, mm. yeah. Um, and if, if you, so sort of moving slightly away mm. um, uh, from the normal questions, if you could design anyone's home in the world, mm. who would you? Is there anybody you think? Uh, of mine. Yours. Okay, it's always from you. it's <laughs> always the cobbler's children, isn't it? And uh, you know, I mean, part of the, one of the things I always find is that um, uh, you know we, we'll do a bit here and there, and you know we've got hello coming, or we've got this. Mm. This, this is what Jackie was does, which is brilliant. If she if she's pissed off with someone, she'll just sort of you know ring up hello and say. Come and come and do the drawing room, and then give me two weeks' notice. <laughs> Quick, do something about it. Um, but I'd love to do something quite, you know, start again. And we, we we've just done, a, we just built a um, uh, a house for uh, Cecile and her two children mm. and uh, Dan, and that was all very much starting from scratch. And that was really nice. And uh, Jackie's so jealous. Um, and we're about to do the same for Hermione and and her husband. Um, and uh, so yeah, I I I. I, I I, I do like, well, actually, our house in Cornwall, we had a fire, so that got done from scratch. Oh, but, you wow, know. gosh. Um, but, yeah, I mean, there's always there's always a sort of, you know, slight longing that um, I'll get the call and uh, be asked to do Buckingham Palace or something yes. like that. Well, you never but, yeah, know. You never know. You never, you never know. know. It needs it. It's looking very down at here, I think. <laughs> yes, it needs an update, definitely. Yeah. Um, are there any reality TV shows or a show that mm. you would particularly like to... Well, like I, I mean, to, uh, be on. I always turn them down. I mean, I you know, I've, I've you been, asked a yeah, lot. I'm sure you're asked all the time. Since the very beginning, yeah. Um, I always turn strictly down because I, I, you know, I didn't want to dance with anyone other than Jackie. I um, which um, I think most people who've been on Strictly say that after they've left. I mean, wanting to dance with their husband mm. or wife, not necessarily with Jackie, although she's a very good dancer. Um, and the Jungle, um, I you know, I'm a celebrity. Have you I mean, been asked? Oh yeah, constantly. Um, and particularly when I was in Australia, they thought we don't even need to pay for Do you the flight. Like the the I did. Bush like, no, trials. I'm quite brave about all of that kind of stuff. Actually, um, I, I think it just. I think it's quite contrived. I think if I'm I was sure. going to do something like that, I mean, in the very early days, I I, I know Bear Grylls quite well, and he was very keen on the idea of me doing like you know a week with him, mm. absolutely, you know, hard ass, yeah, yeah. you know, somewhere really, really right. out there. Yeah. Um, and I was quite keen on the idea, actually. Um, I, it just didn't work with dates. Um, no. But I think if I was going to do something, I would do it big and I would do it real. Mm. Um, I mean, there have been a couple yeah, of things. I've, I've, there, was a, there was a big show a few years ago called Maestro, which is about learning to conduct. I would have loved to have done that. Mm. But then, you know, I did the um, celebrity painting challenge. Um, I did the uh, carving the ice snowman thing. Um, oh, I've done a, time. this Isn't stuff, there? this Got stuff, time. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I tend to, the thing is that I tend to do, I'll only, I'll do it if it's an interesting thing to do. Of course. Yes. What I don't do is do it because I want to be on television. No, no. Um, I, I've, I've spent 25 years trying to be sacked from television. Uh, so <laughs> I'm, I'm never the first one in the queue saying, oh, give us that job. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'd rather not be on television mm. and just do the things that I like, that doing, like doing, I enjoy doing, yeah. yeah. Oh, Lawrence, thank you. Fascinating. Love to see you. Um, I wonder whether we could do a little quick tour around the yeah around yeah the no shop. sure sure um, that would be fantastic. Do you want to do that on your own or do we? Um, we could do it. Oh, do you want to? Go, have you got well, time to do a quick 